This question asks us to draw the Lewis structures for a few different compounds and then determine what their electron domain and molecular geometries each are. I'm not going to do it for all the examples I illustrated in the previous video, but I will do it for these two. As I discussed earlier, in order to determine uh, or draw a molecule's Lewis structure, we first of all have to count out how many total electrons there are in the system. Uh, sulfurs in column 6 of the periodic table, so it has six valence electrons, as is oxygen. There are three different oxygens here, so I'm going to, uh, I have six electrons from each one. There's a negative two charge, which uh, corresponds to the addition of two more electrons to the system. When I add all that together, I get 26 total electrons to play with. That is the total number of electrons here. Step two is to take the central atom, in this case sulfur, which is almost always, or sorry, I should say the central atom is almost always the less electronegative atom in the system. And it's usually the one that's written to the left in the formula. The major exception is hydrogen because hydrogen can never be a central atom because it can only have one bond. In this case we've got sulfur as a central atom so I'll just take sulfur and draw a single bond out to each of the oxygens. What I do now is I take the remaining electrons that I have and lay them all down until every atom has a full octet. I have, uh, I've already used two, four, six electrons which means that I have 20 electrons left. So I'll just go ahead and go here, 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 here. Uh, I've now used up 24 total electrons in the system. If I put two lone pair, or uh, one lone pair there on the sulfur, I've now used 26. If you actually look at this compound, sulfide, SO3, you'll see that what it actually shows for the most stable loose structure is a double bond between the sulfur and the oxygen with the lone pair retained on the sulfur. Now, that uh, circumstance has that sulfur uh, achieving a hyperoctet. The reason that this is given as a Lewis structure is because uh, the formal charge on this oxygen is zero, whereas on these oxygens it's negative one. The formal charge here on sulfur is zero, so it gives you an overall lower formal charge than what you'd get for the other Lewis structure that I drew, which has a um, formal charge of plus one here on the central atom, and a negative one up here in the upper oxygen. In either case, both Lewis structures are acceptable, however. So we now need to determine the uh, molecular and electron domain geometries. In this particular case, it's going to be the same either way. I've got four different groups around the sulfur. Well, I'm going to go ahead and assemble a model. I'm going to pretend this black uh, sphere represents my sulfur. The sulfur has three oxygens around it and one set of lone pairs. So in this uh, rudimentary model, I've got three oxygens, and this lone pair represents two electrons floating up here that are not bonded uh, to uh, any atom. So the full electron domain geometry, that's where I can include everything, including the lone pairs, is tetrahedral. Now if I'm just looking at the molecular geometry, that's where I remove the lone pairs, at least in my brain or uh, literally if I have a model, and look at what that geometry is. Now that shape, you'll notice it's got a triangular base, it looks like a triangle, three points on the base, and it's coming up to a peak, so it's like a pyramid up uh, with a triangle base, so that is a trigonal pyramid molecular geometry. Well now look at this other example. Drawing the Lewis structure, step one, I count the total number of valence electrons. I've got seven on bromine. I have three individual fluorines, each of which has uh, seven <clears throat> valence electrons. So I add all of that up. It gives me 28 total electrons to play with. I now draw out uh, the bonds. Bromine goes to fluorine, fluorine, fluor uh, fluorine, I guess. Now I'm going to lay down a bunch of electrons here to try and satisfy everybody's octet. I've got uh, 8 electrons times 3 is 24 electrons. I've got 4 more electrons that I have to put somewhere. Where do those extra electrons go? They have to go on the bromine. So I'm going to put 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here. That is a central atom that has 5 things around it. Three, it has 3 fluorines and 2 sets of lone pairs. What is the geometry of that going to be? Well, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So looking at this closely, I've got... I'll uh, remove these lone pairs so that we can see them here. This is supposed to represent a bromine, and this is supposed to be a bond to a fluorine, a bond to a fluorine, and a bond to a fluorine. And then these little bulbous thingies are supposed to be electron uh, pairs, or lone pairs. So I could do this kind of thing. There I've got lone pairs. You, you might imagine a couple other ways we could do it. You could imagine, for example, the, uh, the three fluorines all being in a trigonal plane. So I'll show you that right there. If they're all on a, the same plane, they're 120 degrees apart. And then these lone pairs would be uh, right here, and they would be uh, 90 degrees away from each of the fluorines and 180 degrees apart from each other. So you kind of have to look at this and, and ask yourself, what is the furthest apart these lone pairs can be from each other, and how do I arrange everything else so that that's uh, still the case? 
I think that if we put each of the lone pairs in the plane, then um, that's going to get them 120 degrees, actually a little bit more than 120 degrees apart from each other because they'll have the tendency to push the fluorines a little bit more than, than they want to be pushed in the opposite direction. So that's probably going to be the furthest away those uh, lone pairs can be from each other, it will be in this plane. So electronic uh, geometry is where you consider everything, and uh, molecular geometry is where you only look at the atoms. So uh, if I'm looking at everything and considering the whole shape of this, in other words, if I look at these uh, lone pairs and, and pretend that they're just atoms like everybody else, what is the uh, molecular or the electron domain geometry? And the answer is I've got a triangle going from these three groups here, coming up to a pyramid on top and going down to a second pyramid on bottom. Two pyramids, triangle in the middle. That's a trigonal bipyramid. Now, if I'm looking at molecular geometry, I remove the alone pairs and just look at what's left. That is called a T-shaped geometry, so this would be a T-shaped molecule.